Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bob Hope and Virginia Bruce in My Favorite Blonde. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When we set out to engage Bob Hope for tonight's play, we expected to have a little trouble. We always had the same kind of trouble. We just can't find him. Rumor had it he was playing golf with Bing Crosby for the benefit of the Red Cross. Another report said he was putting on a big benefit show in San Francisco. And still further news said he'd gone to Alaska. We finally tracked him to an army camp near Seattle. He'd just flown in from the Aleutian Islands to do his radio show. And the next day, he winged north to the Aleutians again to entertain more servicemen. But we pinned him down for this week, and unless he's escaped to Australia within the last minute or two, he's waiting behind the Lux Radio Theater curtain now with Virginia Bruce, ready to star in his paramount picture success, My Favorite Blonde. Our play takes Bob and the beautiful Miss Bruce on a wild adventure with a gang of spies who are desperately trying to capture a military secret that our brilliant hero doesn't even know he possesses. There's another secret which everybody should possess these days, and that's how to make all the things we own last longer. Not exactly a military secret, but it helps a great deal when 130 million people stop all needless waste. A good many of you have made Lux Flakes a partner in that job, a kind of household chief of staff in the campaign to make the family wardrobe set new records for long life. So if it's something washable that you're trying to protect, Lux Flakes is your first line of defense. And that's one kind of strategy that every household general should know. Now stand by for my favorite blonde, as the curtain rises for Act One, starring Bob Hope as Larry Haynes and Virginia Bruce as Karen Bentley. <laughs> a prologue to our story. On board a ship, just docking in New York Harbor, a man has been shot. He comes weaving along the deck, supporting himself on the handrail. Reaching his stateroom door, he stumbles and falls. Karen! Karen! Captain Alvin! Quick! What happened? Are you hurt? Listen, they're on to us. They know who we are. Did they get the scorpion? No, it's pinned under my coat lapel. Take it and go. But I can't leave you here. You must. You'll have to carry on alone. Do you know the instructions? I'm to proceed first to Chicago, 1350 North Shore Drive, an apartment rented in the name of Mr. and Mrs. Marco. I will be Mrs. Marco. Yes, but if you are caught, get rid of the scorpion. No matter what you have to do, get rid of it. I understand. And remember, they're watching you. Every minute, they are watching you. In an apartment somewhere in New York, a foreign-looking woman reads a note. We have failed. British agent known as Karen Bentley now has Scorpion. Jeweled pin containing flight plans. Carl. Yes, Madam Koenig. We must obtain this Scorpion. Yes, Madam Koenig. Find the girl. Follow her. Stop at nothing. Do you understand? I understand. I'll Hitler. In another part of New York, in the Princess Vaudeville Theater, the second act is just coming to a finish. This is Haynes and Percy. Percy, the important part of the act, is a penguin. And Haynes is, well, Haynes is a man with a long nose. Uh, Percy has just completed a difficult trick. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was swell, Percy, and good acting should be rewarded with a fish. There. That was delicious. Now I'll see if I can find one for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will now perform a trick which has never before been performed by man or beast. Starting from the top of this 30-foot platform, I will slide down a roller skate, leap into the air, and turn a back somersault, landing directly on my feet. Professor, if you please. Remember, folks, this trick has never been successfully performed by man or beast. Well, I kept that record clean, didn't I? <laughs> Mr. 
Haynes. Say, you okay, Mr. Haynes? Sure, I'm fine. What's a broken back in vaudeville? Hey, Percy sure wowed him tonight, Mr. Haynes. Oh, he's got relatives out front. <coughs> Quiet, listen, you character. If you keep hogging this act, you and me are going to have a talk with a taxidermist. Here's a fish. Now get in your box. Say, Mr. Haynes, I heard about Percy going to Hollywood to make a picture. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Mike. You going to be in the picture, too? Am I going... Are you kidding? The whole picture's built around me. I'm in and out all the time, in and out all the time. Hollywood. Gee, that's big stuff. Yeah, I didn't want to go at first, but they kept dangling those platinum swimming pools in front of me. Come on, first, let's get dressed. So long, Mike. So long, Mr. Haynes. Good luck. Thanks. Am I going to be in that picture? How do you like that character? Oh. Oh. Oh, excuse me. It's all right. Come in quickly. Say, isn't this my dressing room? I'm sorry. Oh, sure it is. That's my name up there. See, Haynes and Percy. Are you Mr. Percy? That's right. No, I mean, that's wrong. I'm Haynes. This is Percy in the box. Oh. Tell me, has anyone ever told you that you're beautiful? Mr. Haynes, would you please close the door? Close it? Close it. Now lock it, please. Lock it? Lock it. Now sit down. Sit down? Sit down. Well, thank you. Hey, wait a minute. What's this all about? Shh. Who are you? Don't talk so loud. Oh, I was shouting, wasn't I? No time to lose. To lose what? What are you doing here? Somebody was following me. I came in the stage door to throw him off the trail. Mr. Haynes, do you know what it feels like to be to be followed and hounded and watched every second of your life? Well, I used to. Now I pay cash for everything. <laughs> Look at me. I'm looking. What hair, what eyes, what lips? You've got to trust me. Yeah, but who's going to trust me? <laughs> and you mustn't ask any questions. My name's Karen Bedley. I can't tell you any more. My name's Larry Haynes. There's no more to tell. Oh, I uh, read your telegram. I'm sorry. Oh, what telegram? Well, it was lying right on the shelf there. Oh, you mean about Percy and me going to Hollywood? Yeah, we whipped up a little picture deal. It says, have signed Percy for picture, Igloo Love, 500 a week. Contact calls for Bird to be in Hollywood next Tuesday. Had difficulty finding spots for you, but may be able to get you 30 a week as Percy's trainer. Oh, oh no, that isn't right. You see, Percy just plays a bit in the picture, and the whole thing's built around me. I'm in and out all the time, weaving in and out all... Uh, when are you leaving for Los Angeles? Huh? Los Angeles. When is your train leaving? Tell me, is that your own hair? Did you scalp an angel? Please. I must know. When are you leaving? Are those your own eyes, both of them? I'm in very serious trouble. Tell me what train you're taking. Well, I can take any train. I got enough steam up now to act as an engine. <laughs> well, that's good, because I'm, I'm going partway with you. Yeah, well, that'll be... Yeah? I've got to get to Chicago. Oh, that's fine. We'll go by way of the Panama Canal. <laughs> when we reach the canal, we lock ourselves in. Well... What's your name? Please, Mr. Haynes, you're not listening to oh, me. Yes, I am. I said every word you heard. Oh, please. <laughs> Let's get out of here. And remember, if anyone asks you, I'm a business acquaintance. If anyone asks, this is some business. <laughs> Come on, I've got a cab waiting right over this way. Wait a minute. It's still there. Who is? Listen, have you been drinking pixie juice or something? Come on, or we'll miss the train. All right. Let's go. Um, say, Jack... Remember that split week in Waco when we were slip and nip? Huh? What are you talking about? Boy, did we panic them. Did we wow them in that hotel? Floppy Louis. Was it crawling? Was it crawling? Oh, yeah. Flip and nip and Floppy Louis were sisters. <laughs> I know, because I'm their mother. <laughs> You're a riot. Jack, you killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Your tonsils went that way right there. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Listen, what is this? Get in the cab, quickly. Now, wait a minute. What's all this D's, D's, and Dem stuff? And who's flipping nip and floppy Louie? I'm getting confused. No questions, please. I'm being followed by two men in black. You sure you don't mean two men in white? Get in the cab. Okay. Get on the train. Oh, but look, you didn't... Don't just... stop to ask questions. No questions, no questions. I gotta ask questions. You didn't even stop to buy a ticket. Traveling all over without tickets. Who do you think you are, Wendell Wilkie? <laughs> I'll get it on the train. You know, there's something screwy here. Now, now, don't worry, Mr. Percy. Haynes, look, sister, I've been around a lot, but you're driving me daffy. I thought we were gonna have a beautiful romance. I thought for a change the dame was trying to pick me up. But now I don't know. Look, you don't want to take this train. Why don't you fly? The airports are all being watched. Yeah, but you don't need a plane. A girl with your talent just has to flap her arms. Mr. Haynes, where's your noblesse oblige? Oh, I gave it to the red cap. <laughs> you can't pass me off with a joke. I'm going with you. But look, you've got to get a ticket. There they are. There who is? Don't look. Goodbye, goodbye. You're going with me, so goodbye? Oh, that's sensible. Kiss me. Put your arms around me. Goodbye, goodbye. Hello. <laughs> Don't forget to take your pills. And that green stuff, lots of that, it's good for you. Okay, but don't you drink anymore. You've got quite a snootful now. <laughs> Angel face. I hate to see you going. 
Give my love to Aunt Lucy. Yeah, and how about Uncle Flipnip? <laughs> what am I saying? Goodbye. And don't you worry about Winky and Pinky. I'll see they don't ride their bicycles in traffic. Well, how can they ride bicycles in straitjackets? <laughs> Winky and Pinky. Hey, whatever happened to Stinky? <laughs> Conductor, what time do we arrive in Chicago tomorrow? Nine o'clock, miss. Thank you. Harmony. Miss Bentley. Oh, Carlton. I've been looking for you on the train. I had to fly here. They were following me. Do you have any orders for me? Yes. Marco wired me. He wants you to give me the scorpion. Here, now. But I can't give you the scorpion. I haven't got it. What? Don't worry. I'll get it back. Where is it? I had to get rid of it in Grand Central Station. I pinned it on a man's coat under his lapel. What man? A vaudeville actor, Larry Haynes. Does he know he has it on his coat? No. How are you going to get it again? Leave that to me. All I have to do is to get him to kiss me. I'll unpin the scorpion while he has his arms around me. You seem pretty sure he'll be willing to kiss you. You don't know whether he will or not. <laughs> oh, you don't know Larry Haynes. I'll have the scorpion before we leave all. Hmm. There's a nice headline. Hollywood Inks, Percy, next is Haynes. Wait till he asks me for an ad. Hello again. Oh, no, no, it isn't so. Go away, will you? Stop haunting me. Aren't you glad to see me? Oh, it can't be you. I must be seeing things. That's what I get for drinking those two Coca-Cola straight. <laughs> Barry, don't be silly. It's me. I flew here. Well, look, Winky and Pinky, before I open the window and let you fly out again, what do you want? Barry, here we are. Just me and you. Is this a nice way to treat me? Look, will you go away? I know all about girls like you. How do you know? My mommy done told me. Now go away. <laughs> Larry, sit down beside me. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Come on, close. Now, listen, I don't think... No, that... much closer. Closer, Larry, closer. At a time like this, I have to run out of blood. <laughs> Put your arms around me. No, no, I, I don't think I should do that. I really don't. I... Is that me talking? <laughs> You're cute. Kiss me. Oh, no, please. I can never face my friends again. There's I... nothing to be afraid of. Kiss me, Larry. Oh, no, no, I can't. I mustn't. I don't even know you, and besides, I've given up kissing strange women. What made you stop? Strange women. Look, I... <laughs> I just don't want to play. Oh, Larry, you know, there's something about you, uh, an air of... An air of... Shouldn't say quoi. Yeah, well, I always use a little after shaving. It makes me smell nice. Larry. Larry, this is our night. Nobody can take it away from me. It's ours. Ours. Kiss me. Kiss me, Larry. Oh, please, you mustn't. My scoutmaster will hate me for this. Kiss me. Oh, Oh. Did you like that? Well, I'll tell you as soon as the water on my knee stops boiling. <laughs> Kiss me again, Karen. No, I think that's quite enough. Oh, well, honey, look. You know, you and me could make music together. Right now, I feel like the hit parade. <laughs> Come on, kiss me. Take your hands off me. Ouch. Say, what do you operate on, alternating current? Good night, Mr. Hayes. Hey. Simply. All right, Carlton. I've got the scorpion. Here, take it. No, listen. They're on the train. You'll have to get rid of it again. Get rid of the scorpion? Yes, put it back on Haynes' coat. Can you do it? Well, I'll, I'll have to kiss him again, I suppose. I guess I can do it. Good. <laughs> Leave it on his coat all night. And you keep out of sight until morning. All right. Hello, Larry. No, not again. <laughs> oh, Larry. I'm, I'm sorry about slapping you. I... I wanted everything to be so beautiful. Yeah, well, go and want it someplace else. Go on, flap your arms, get going, scoot, make like a jeep. Go, go, go. Oh, now did I hurt my little man? Yeah, little man is irked, and if little woman isn't careful, she's going to get a little hit in the head. Oh, Larry, kiss me. No, I don't think you can't do this. Boy, whoever thought I'd be doing this kind of defense work. <laughs> Now, wasn't that nice? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you tickled me. Did I? Yeah, under my lapel here. You oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, but you better go now. Goodbye. Very dear. There's something I've got to tell you. Hmm? It's a matter of life and death. Well, I'm sorry, sister. I don't know where to buy tires either. <laughs> You've got to help me. You've got to help me. All I could get on the train was an upper berth, and I don't dare to sleep there. I ought to be behind a locked door. Yeah, and a little padding on the walls wouldn't hurt either. <laughs> now, obviously we can't both stay here, so would you... Would I what? Would you change places with me, please? 
please, Larry. Oh, I can't do it. Besides, Percy needs a room. He walks in his sleep and he doesn't wear pajamas. <laughs> oh, Larry, dear, the lives of countless thousands depend upon you helping me. No. Please, please, here's my ticket. Upper six in the next car. Oh, now, wait. Wait, let me get this. You mean to tell me the whole world's going to come unglued unless Percy and me sleep in upper six and you take compartment A? Unless you help me now, it may change the whole map of the world. Do you understand? No, no, keep calm, sister. Don't get hysterical now. I don't want any trouble. I'm going. You stay here. And look, do me a favor, will you? When you're changing the map of the world, you know Texas, the panhandle state? Yes. Yeah. Well, lift up the panhandle a little. I want to see what's cooking, will you? <laughs> I'll remember. Will you? Yeah. Yeah, but don't do anything about it till tomorrow, huh? Good night, Jack. Good night, Flippy. <laughs> Ah, the Windy City. Larry! Larry! And look what it's blowing my way. Get lost, will you? Wait, please. Oh, I was so frightened. I thought I'd lost you. I ran through the whole train. I looked... Larry, that coat. Why are you wearing that coat? Where's your other coat? The one you were wearing last night. Where is it? Well, I changed it. I also changed my socks. Oh, but why? Why? Because one of them had no feet in them. Oh, but the, the coat. Larry, it was such a wonderful-looking coat. I... I wanted you to wear it. I, I wanted to be proud of you. Yeah, between the hot water bottle and my extra lump of sugar. So what? Boy, a taxi, a thin taxi for what? Oh, but Larry, Larry, you have three hours between trains. Oh, wouldn't you like to go past my apartment house and stop me off? Stop you off? I sure would. How many stories is it? <laughs> what do you want, my blood? You pushed me up on that shelf. I didn't sleep all night. Look at the bags under my eyes. The porter put them off the train three times by mistake. <laughs> See you later, sister. All right. Well, then... This is goodbye. Good, good. May I take this cat? Okay, okay. Goodbye. So long. Thank you. Porter could be thank Yes. <laughs> well, it was wonderful while it lasted. Yes. I'll never forget you. Please try, will you? <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. 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 Hey, Porter, get me a cab. Yes, sir. Yeah, just grab that bag. Hey, my bag. My bag. Where's my bag? Well, I'll put it in the cab with the lady, sir. And she's got it. She's got my bag. Taxi, follow that cab. Okay. Wait for me! Wait for me! Glen Arms Apartments. Just a moment, please. Hey, excuse me. I'm in a hurry. Yes, sir? Tell me something. Where's that blonde bag that just got in? I mean that blonde with a bag. Where is she? Oh, 318. You mean Mrs. Marco? Marco, Parco, Sharko. All I know is I'm a Jarko for getting mixed up with her. Thanks. Uh, is she expecting you? No, it's going to be a big surprise. 318. 318. Ah. Oh. So that's your racket, huh? Bag snatcher. Give me that bag. No, let go of that bag. Let go. Yeah, let go. I'm going to call the police. That's what I'm going to do. No, stop. I'll stop when you... Stop now. Put down that bag or I'll shoot you dead. You talked me into it. <laughs> now, listen. Be careful with that gun. Get away from me or so help me, I'll let you have it. Hey, now, wait a minute. That's a gun. It's liable to go off and shoot somebody, and I'm the only one here. Put that bag over there and open it. All right. Very well. Look out behind you. Ah, oh, now give me that gun, sister. Some trick, huh? I learned that from Dick Tracy. Thank you. Drop that gun. Drop that gun, do you hear? Drop it. Oh, I didn't tell you to drop it on my foot. Let me alone. Now get over there and sit down. There. Now we're cooking with charcoal. What do you think this is, sister? Gangbusters? What are you going to do? You're going to the clink. That's what I'm going to do. Wait, you're making a very serious mistake. Oh, I didn't want to tell you this, but now I have to. I'm a British agent. Well, you're too late. I already got an agent. <laughs> Give me a minute and I'll prove it to you. Okay, sister, but don't try anything funny. Look, do you see this jewel pin? Hmm? I pinned it on your coat on the train. I had to. A bug. Why'd you pin a bug on my coat? You know what's in this bug? Little bugs? <laughs> a microscopically engraved cipher code for the flight of 150 bombers from Los Angeles to England. Is that so? Do you see this ring? Do you know what's inside? Benny Goodman and his band player was a little crowded. Oh, Larry, this is serious. The Secret Service of the Enemy have discovered the original flight plan. Therefore, the ones contained in this scorpion must be in Los Angeles by noon on Tuesday. British agent, what do you take me for, a round haircut? I know you, Madam Wacky from Tahaki. <laughs> Larry, this is no joke. This scorpion must be delivered to an agent somewhere in this apartment. Oh, sure, sure, but you'll be all right. Don't worry, you've just got a little static in the attic. You'll get over it. I tell you, I'm being followed everywhere. On the boat, on the train, what's everywhere. Death on every corner. Let go of me, will you? Bombers, agents, things following us. What's going on here? I gotta get out of... Oh. 
Now you got me seeing things. You know what I just thought I saw in there? A guy with a knife in his back. <laughs> I'll take another look. <laughs> there is a guy in there, and he does have a knife in his back. Let me see, quick. Don't go in there. Oh, look. He's dead. Dead? Like, like a doornail? Yes. Now, now do you believe me? Seeing is believing, and what I just saw I don't like. I tell you, they'll stop at nothing. In the past 24 hours, they've killed two men. And if we don't look out, they'll get us next. Us? You mean you. You can't mean me. I've got a long lifeline. Look. Well, it was here a minute ago. <laughs> they've seen you with me, and that's enough. They'll slit your throat on sight. You mean peel my apple? <laughs> Say, don't get me mixed up in this thing. i got to get to California. i got to see a man about a penguin. I'll see you later. Don't open that door. I'm going. I'm not getting mixed up in any murders, especially mine. But you can't get out of here. They have a man out there watching. You'll never get past that door. Oh, no? No. Listen, baby, if I'm not out of that door in two seconds flat, my name's not Larry Haynes. <laughs> Meet John Doe. <laughs> My favorite blonde starring Bob Hope and Virginia Bruce follows in just a moment. Now, how good are you at arithmetic? Here's a problem for you. Take eight plates, add four cups and saucers, eight knives, eight forks and four spoons, four glasses, a pot and a pan. You, I'm dizzy already. And then add a dishpan full of strong wash day soap suds. Hurts me just to think about it. Multiply the whole thing by three meals a day, seven days a week. And what have you got? Chances are you've got dishpan hands. And that's something no woman wants. Or needs to have. If she'll make just one simple change in that daily job of dishwashing. If she'll stop using strong suds and change to gentle Lux Flakes, that ugly dishpan look will disappear. In actual tests, hands grew lovelier in from two to seven days after changing to Lux. The women who made these tests used no creams or lotions on their hands. They just changed to Lux. And you can change to Lux for less than a penny a day. For less than a penny a day, you can watch your hands lose that rough dishpan look. Grow soft and smooth again till they're as lovely as ever. You see, Lux is famous for mildness. And yet along with that wonderful mildness, Lux gives you the other things you want in a dishwashing soap. Quick suds. Plenty of suds. Long-lasting suds that do a thorough cleansing job. Get the thrifty big box of Lux first thing tomorrow and use it for your dishes every day. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of My Favorite Blonde, starring Bob Hope as Larry Haynes and Virginia Bruce as Karen Bentley. Five seconds have passed since the bullet whizzed past Larry's head. Just long enough for him to get a grip on his knees and stop him from shaking. His complexion has changed from ashy white to ashy gray. And he objects strenuously to this kind of treatment. They can't do that to me. They can't shoot at me. I'm an American citizen. I'd pay taxes. Well, I'm an American citizen. What are we going to do? Well, all I know is that Marco was supposed to deliver the plan. Now he's dead. Where do I take him to? Well, that's not my racket, sister. Now, one thing I'm sure of, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to call the police. Oh, no, please don't do that, please. Why not? I need protection around here. Jerry, look. Huh? Where? God, there on the table. Two jacks and three aces. J, J, one, one, one. Two jacks and three aces. No wonder he was stabbed, using a pinochle deck. <laughs> one, 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 J, J. That's my identification number. Marco must have been trying to communicate with me before they killed him. But how? I see in the car. Here. Here, look through these. All right. I can't hold him. That guy in there with a knife in his back, dead as a herring. Here, look. There's something written on the two estates. Listen. Colonel Ashmont, 1120 Bernardino Street, Los Angeles. Well, what do you know? That's it. We've got to get out of here. I must get to Los Angeles. Well, look, you've got all the dope. You know the guy. Why don't you just phone the stuff into him? But I've told you. It's a secret cipher hieroglyphic. You can't telephone hieroglyphics. It's like, well, it's like telephoning a crossword puzzle. Larry, for heaven's sake, think of something to get us out of here. If we don't get out, I tell you, we're as good as dead. Oh, now, calm down. Don't be afraid of anything. Look at me. I'm not scared. Well, I know you're not scared, Larry, but please open your eyes. <laughs> well, wait. I'll call the cop. Hello? Hello, operator. I want a policeman. Hello, operator. There is no use. Look, the wire's been cut. The wire's... Never mind, operator. <laughs> there is. Look out the window. You see those two men across the street? They're waiting for us. They're killers. Killers? Eight million people in New York, and she's got to pin a bug on me. We got to catch a breeze. We got to get out of here. But how? Wait. Wait, I got an idea. 
Here, start throwing things. What? Go ahead, wreck the joint. What are you doing? It's the only way to get out of here alive. Jerry, stop it. Are you crazy? You almost hit me. I'm just kidding. Don't you get the idea? Wife beating. We got a police escort out of here. Oh, Larry, that's wonderful. Come on, will you? Let's bring it up. Do something. Make some noise. Oh, all right. Now, scream, scream. Help, help, help. Some more. Come on, loud. Help! Car 48. Go to 1350 North Lakeshore Drive. Apartment house. Man beating woman. Woman beating man. Hurry. You're playing with a tiger. Do you know that? Is that so? Louder. Is that so? That's it. Your mother started this whole thing. Oh, no, she did not. Oh, yes, she did. Wait, I'll turn the radio on and get some loud music. Turn it up full. I'll pull the pictures off the wall. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob Oak, the pencil the kid. Still hanging out by your teeth. And I'm here to tell you that I can't stand that guy. Yell. Oh! All right, folks, well, break it up, break it up. Hey! So I'm a muck fence and a spit devil, am I? Listen, you're also a squidge pot, that's what you are. Come on, folks. A squidge pot, why, you? Oh! You can't call me a squidge pot, you've got enough. Come on, come on, grab him, Joe. She's out of the whole thing. I did not. How am I supposed to remember her birthday? This way out. Her last cake had so many candles on it, it took three air raid wardens to put it out. <laughs> Pardon me a second, will you? And that goes for your old lady, too. Now, listen, you old both She's a squidge pod. That's all she is. Just a squidge pod. Hey, officer. Where are you taking us? We're going to slam you two in the cooler. The guy shouldn't go around slugging his wife. Am I right, Joe? Yeah. A man should respect womankind. Especially females. <laughs> Karen. We're going to the jug. No, we're not. I've got an idea. Play up to me. Daddy, Mommy is sorry she had a little lamby party. Huh? What? Daddy saw we hit a little boopsy whoopsy with a little lamby. Oh, yeah. Daddy, you saw we hit a little boopsy with a little whoopsy <laughs> very piano stool. And Daddy's going to kiss boopsy with him. A little boopsy whoopsy. <laughs> <laughs> Bumpy, bumpy, forgive him all, Daddy Waddy. Oh, kiss him, little fingers, where Daddy did it with his naughty, naughty back. Mm, nom, 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 yeah. All right, all right, okay, you two, beat it. Yeah, get out, get out, sporty is. Oh, thanks. Oh, Karen, does little Boopsy want to kiss, pretty policeman? Go on, go on, beat it. Bye, policeman. I couldn't take any more of that, Joe. Me too. I was ready to throw up. Calling car number 48. Car number 48. You have a young couple in your car. Bring them in immediately. Be careful, they are probably armed. They are wanted for the murder of Michael Marco. Murder it. Turn around. Turn around, quick. Webster! Webster! Love player is still at large! Police chase the killer of Michael Marco. $10,000 reward for Larry Haynes dead or alive! Dead or alive, they want me, see? $10,000 reward for anyone who turns me in. Karen, don't let me out of your sight, will you? Why? What's the matter? I don't trust myself. <laughs> Jerry, be serious. You hear me laughing? My train's leaving in a half an hour, and where am I? Sitting up on a rooftop, hiding from the cops. Uh, uh, uh. Don't make so much noise. That was Percy, not me. Oh, I'm sorry. Be quiet, Percy. Look at me. I'm a nervous wreck. What am I doing? Why am I running away from people? What is this? I was a guy with a bird. The bird had a contract. I was going to Hollywood. I'd be wearing emerald teeth and a platinum hat. Then you came along. Now what am I? A hunted animal with a price in his head. Well, I'm telling you something. I'm getting out of here. I didn't kill anybody. I'm going down the street and face him and tell him the truth. Are you? Well, remember this. I'm your only alibi. If you go to the police, I'll tell them you did it. Ah, uh, you wouldn't do a thing like that. Yeah, I guess you would. Larry, Larry, I'm sorry. I, I have been a nuisance. I had no right to get you. You go. You go right ahead to California. I won't stop you. You can clear yourself, and I'll manage somehow. Yeah, in a minute I turn my back, you'll snitch on me. No, I won't. You go right ahead, and thanks for everything. Well, okay. I'm sorry, too, but you understand I got my own trouble. Of course you Well, so long. Come on, Percy. So long, Larry. Good luck. Thanks, and don't worry about me. I feel like a rat leaving her up there. Oh, well, why shouldn't I? I got a job of my own to do. You mean you're running out on her, huh? What are you, a man or a mouse? A mouse, but at least I'm not a mouse with a rope around my neck. <laughs> running out and leaving her up there alone. 
Well, I got my rights. And why are you stalling? Why don't you go? I'm not stalling. You keep out of this. Not stalling. Who do you think you're kidding? Go on back. Hey, hey, look at me. Wait a minute. I'm going back. No, I'm not going to do it. That's better. What if I am walking out? She's awfully pretty. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's got nothing to do with bombers or spies. Now I know what it is that's got me. It's that blonde hair. It's those great big baby blue eyes. That's what's pulling me back. Well, I'm not going to let it. Oh, you're not, eh? No, I'm not. You... Oh, what's the use? I'm going back. Man. Yeah, it's me. I'm back. Call her my manhood and it answered, darn it. Oh, Larry. But I'm going to tell you something right to your face. You know what I think of you, don't you? I think... Do you? I think you're wonderful. You do? Gee... Don't look now, but I think somebody's trying to attract our attention. Quick, down the fire escape. Stop him! Hurry, hurry. Wait, I forgot Percy. Percy! You can't stop her. I gotta stop. Without that penguin, I'm a dead duck. Percy! First, I'm a murderer. Now, I'm an automobile thief. You know, you're a bad influence on me. We had to do something. We didn't steal the car. We we just borrowed it. Yeah, just like Henderson is going to borrow our tires. (laughs) <laughs> Terry, look Look, they're following us There's a whole car full of police right behind us I know, but are they after us? That's the question And that's the answer <laughs> Terry, they're shooting Faster, Larry Can't you go any faster? Listen, we haven't got wings, you know But we may have any minute Oh, hurry Please hurry What do you mean, hurry? We just passed Flash Gordon <laughs> Terry, look over there That's an airplane in that field Well, what about it? Get over to it Cut across the field I can fly it All right, hang on Watch out for those trees Hang on, hang on Stop the car, stop Well, that's better than using brakes. It saves rubber. Come on. Get in the plane, the back seat. Hey, you sure you know how to run this thing? Of course, my brother's a British ace. Yeah, well, my uncle's a dog catcher, but I can't bark. Let's go. (laughs) California, here we come. Madam Kunick. Well, Carl, have you got the girl? No, Madam Kunick. She's in the plane flying to Los Angeles. You've let her slip through your fingers, you fool. Not right, Madam Kunick. You know where she's going. To Colonel Ashman, 1120 Bernardino Street, Los Angeles. Good. Call Faber in Los Angeles at once. He will take care of Colonel Ashman. Say... Who is this Colonel Ashmont, anyway? He's a liaison officer between the British Air Ministry and American Aircraft Production. Yeah, but what's he going to do with that bug even if we do get it to him? We route the flight of the bombers to synchronize with an RAF escort. Hey, hey, what's that? Well, it isn't hooving cough. Look at the gasoline gauge. There's not enough gas in that tank to clean a door in it. Oh, that's fine. That's great. That means we're going to be stuck up here in the air where everybody can see us. Oh, hey, help! Sit down, sit down and hang on. I'm going to land in that field down there. That's what I'm afraid of. I don't want to be planted like a peanut. (laughs) So your brother was a British ace, huh? Well, we landed, didn't we? Yeah, we landed all right, but I didn't know we were coming in on my collarbone. Oh, for heaven's sake, Larry, stop squawking. That wasn't me. That was Percy. Oh. Oh, I'm tired. I'm hungry, too. Larry, look. What are those things in that field? Watermelons. Oh, boy. Oh, couldn't we buy some? Oh, they don't taste like anything unless you steal them. Come on, I'll treat you. Open one up quick. Sit down. Say, you know, I remember back home there was a watermelon patch. Me and a kid named Turkey Williams used to swipe them. Every time we'd get caught, I'd blame Turkey. I was a town heel. (laughs) Here. Here, try this. Mmm. Oh, that's good. I never saw a melon like this before. Well, it's really just a cantaloupe that went Hollywood. Do you like it? It's like sucking on my bath sponge when I was a baby. Uh, To really get at it, you should have earplugs in a bathing suit. Really? Sure. Then you see... Good morning, folks. Uh Uh-oh, we got company. Enjoying yourself, folks? Uh, Who who are you? Jed Hawkins is my name, but my friends call me Sheriff. On your feet, both of you. Don't try and think funny. I've got you covered. Now, look, Sheriff, we My just... car's over this way. Get going. Officer, let me explain. We've got to get to California. Young woman, it'll likely be a long time before you get to California. I know everything's against the Sheriff, but we're absolutely innocent. Look at me. Do I look like the criminal type? Well, look at her, then. 
Young fella, all I can say is you're in mighty serious trouble. But he didn't do anything. I got him mixed up in all this. Yeah, a lot of fellas get in trouble because of a woman. No, folks, crime don't pay. You start stealing a watermelon, then it'll be an automobile. The first thing you know, you're liable to get mixed up into something like this. Look at this headline here. Hmm, Love Slayer still at large. But look, Sheriff... Better digest it, son. Maybe it'll be a lesson to you. You wouldn't want to be him, would you? I wouldn't want... Oh, oh, yes, I read about that fellow. They say he only has two fingers in one of his hands. <laughs> in the car, please. Oh, certainly. After you, dear. Excuse me, Sheriff. I was speaking to the lady. You know, you folks are liable to get ten days for stealing and trespassing. You don't want to try anything around these here parts. Well, might as well have a little music while we're driving to town. Turn on that radio, son. Oh, sure, sure. I hope it's a wine music. It's nothing like a hula on the way to the cooler. Murderers were last seen flying a small blue airplane. They... Oh, wrong station. <laughs> This will be better. For their apprehension, notify all law enforcement police of Illinois. Oh, monotonous, isn't it? And so, boys and girls, if you will send us the labels from two dozen cans of Minso Dog and Cat Food, we will send you a badge, a hatchet, and a life membership in the Junior Woodpeckers of America. Oh, that's what I've been waiting for. I've got 18 labels already, and I don't even own a dog or a cat. I've been eating the dog myself, stuffed myself. the stuff in the dog and the whole thing, Sheriff. <laughs> and it's... And... I've been eating the dog food myself and it hasn't had any bad effect on me at all. Except once in a while, I... Oh, oh, darn it, there it goes again. Got that other station bag. Got that other... Oh, no, Sheriff. Station bag. Oh, that's just the news. You don't want to hear news. Get it. Repeating. Be on the lookout for a man and a woman, escaped murderers. The woman, a blonde about five feet five, when last seen was wearing a reversible trench coat and a beret. The man is about five feet ten, clean cut, distinguished looking features, naturally dressed and with all the appearances of a gentleman. Well, what do you know? I didn't think I was so pretty. Ten thousand dollars reward is offered for their capture, dead or alive. Murderers? Well, looks like I struck oil. Sheriff, wait. Oh, we can explain. Put up your hands. But, Sheriff, we're innocent. Shut up. If you move a finger, I'll plug you. Now keep those hands up, both of you. Well, Larry, I guess we'll have to face the music. Yeah, it looks like curtains. I see my life passing before me, and Don Amici has the leading role. (laughs) We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Here's Libby Collins, our fashion reporter, who says it's important to keep the stretch in other things besides your imagination. And I think the women in our audience will know what I mean when I say it's a two-way stretch that I'm thinking about. Yes, those comfortable, easy-to-wear foundations and girdles that we've been taking for granted are worth their weight in, well, in rubber today. And of course, we all want to keep ours wearable just as long as we can. Here's what a well-known magazine said recently. The sad truth as to why most girdles and corsets wear out long before their time is that they aren't washed often enough. So there's the first rule for you. Lux girdles and foundations often so that they never get really soiled and so perspiration doesn't weaken the fibers. Second, and very important, always use mild Lux flakes. Strong soaps or rubbing with cake soap may weaken elastic fibers, spoil the fit of your girdle. Squeeze rich, lukewarm Lux suds gently through the fabric. Don't rub, don't scrub, don't wring or twist. Never dry over a radiator or use a hot iron on anything that has rubber in it. You can be sure that Lux flakes are ideal for precious girdles because makers of fine foundations recommend Lux. Lux care means longer wear, and that counts more than ever today. Now... Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of My Favorite Blonde, starring Bob Hope and Virginia Bruce. Larry Haynes, with his penguin under his arm, is on his way to jail. He and Karen sit glumly in the sheriff's car as they enter a small town somewhere in Illinois. Murderers! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess this is my lucky day. Now, keep your eye on the road, Sheriff. I know it's 10,000 dead or alive, but I'd rather be captured alive. <laughs> Murderers. You'll get the chair for this. And 10 days extra for sealing watermelons. Sheriff, look out for that car. Hey, what the... <laughs> See what he did? What's the matter with you? Why don't you look where you're going? Me look where I'm going. I'll get out and suck that guy in the nose. Oh, you will. Yeah, I will. Oh, wait a Harry, make a break for us. What? Get out, run. Head for those houses over there. Okay, you ready? Come on. Give me your hand. Hey, grab those two. They're murderers. Come back. Hey! <laughs> We'll hide there. Well, what is this place? It's Vanderbilt High School. Let's go on in. High school? I never thought I'd make it. My mother would be proud of me. <laughs> quiet. Listen, stop picking on me. I, I didn't... know it wasn't you. It was Percy, but keep him quiet. Oh, there you are. Look out. There you are at last. Who, me? <laughs> come, 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 Dr. Higby. Come, come, come. The ladies are waiting for you. Ladies? What ladies? Oh. As if you didn't know. Oh, Dr. Higby, the ladies will be so excited. The ladies will? Well, you run along and tell them I'm here. Very well. Oh, girl. Girl. Did you hear that? That woman thinks I'm a doctor. Come on, let's get out Wait. of here. They must be having a meeting or something. We could hide right there. If she thinks you're a doctor, so much the better. Yeah, but I can't be a doctor. I don't know a pimple from a hole in the head. Now, Come don't on. argue with me. Come on. Dr. Higby. Goodbye. Come here. He'll be right there, madam. Uh, listen. Quiet, get in that room over there. Right in here, Dr. Higby. The ladies are waiting, doctor. Oh, the ladies are? We'll just wash them up and put them on the table. <laughs> oh, doctor. The doctor's so amusing, isn't he? Oh, that I am. That I am. I kill my patients. Oh, <laughs> you, uh, you're a little late, doctor. We were delayed on an emergency call. Twins. Oh. No, it was triplets. You left early. Oh. <laughs> this way, doctor. Just sit there on the platform. Oh, thank you, thank you. Ladies, ladies, please, quiet, please. Mothers of Glenby, we're rather late in getting started, so I won't take up your time. I want to introduce Dr. Robert Higby, the eminent Chicago baby specialist, who is going to address us on motherhood. You're on, Higby. Yeah, but I don't know anything about babies, the small kind. Now go on, say something, just talk. Oh. Uh, fellow mothers. <laughs> they say that a woman who hasn't been a mother is like a ship that hasn't sailed. Hmm, it looks like the whole fleet's here today. <laughs> uh, babies. The first thing you probably want to know is, where do they come from? Those little bundles of joy, those little falling stars. Well, one day you're standing in your head baking an upside-down cake, and the next, bingo, you're a mother. Well, let's say the baby, little Julius, has arrived. What is the first thing he does? He cries. Exactly, and so life begins. It's just like stepping in the starter, and away he goes, speeding up life's highway, his little tank full of gas. <laughs> no ration card necessary, his little engine buzzing, and his little horn tooting, wah, 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 wah. Now, mothers, I think I'd better get going. I mean, I think I'd better get out of here. The doctor means the time is short. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, will you please ask them now? Uh, Dr. Higby, I always seem to have a great deal of trouble putting on those little rubber panties. Oh, well, why don't you try a larger size? Who's next? <laughs> Right, she's always doing the wrong thing. What should I do? Well, wait another ten years, and if there's no improvement, mail me your phone number. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Doctor, this is my little boy. Your little boy. Well, ugly little shaver, isn't he? Hiya, son. Shake hands. Let go of me. <laughs> they didn't lower that draft age far enough. <laughs> now, Frederick, shake hands. Don't be afraid of the good doctor. The good doctor stinks. <laughs> You're not exactly Chanel number five yourself, son. <laughs> Will you look at his throat, please? I'm a little worried about him. Well, I don't blame you, madam. All right, son. Now open your mouth and say, ah. Ah, ah. Wider, wider, yes. Marvelous thing, the human stomach. Just look in there. Yeah, how's your stomach, Doc? Oh, fine. A little empty at the moment, but fine. Well, I can take it. Can you take it? Take what? In the stomach. This. Oh! Frederick! Wait a minute, you little brat. Now I'll see if you can take it. Well, don't stand there. Pick me up, somebody. <laughs> Did 
you ever hop a freight before? No. Have you? Yeah, but it's much nicer this way. This way? Yeah, without the tarn feathers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Larry, you're wonderful. For what? Oh, for sticking by me through all this. Yeah, I'm a great hero. I was all set to run out on you. In Chicago, on that roof, I gave you a chance to leave. What held you? I hit a patch of bubble gum. Look, I'm wise to you. I know what you're trying to do. You want to get me talking in pink ribbons like a valentine. All right, you held me, that's what. I couldn't run out on you. I had no feet. You, you're a beautiful blonde magnet, and I'm nothing but a carpet tack. There, I said it. Now you're happy? Yes, Karen. Very happy. And I don't mind in the least bit you're talking like a valentine. Look, you, if I wanted to come right out and say I love you, you wouldn't stop me, see? No, I wouldn't. But you can't make me. I'm not like a lot of other guys that beat around the bush. If it was hitting me here in the heart, I'd come right out and say so. Then you mean it's not hitting you in the heart? I didn't say that. Supposing it is. What business is it of yours? At least I'm not slopping over. You don't get me talking icky sticky. Oh, go ahead, Larry. Talk icky sticky. No, sir, not he. Sure. First thing you know, I'd be drooling a lot of hooey, and next thing you know, I'd be hugging you and kissing you and... Well, why don't you? No, I... Oh. Oh. Hey, what kind of a kiss is that? It's that, uh, new thing. Yeah, well, hang on to it. Don't let them put a priority on that. <laughs> Eleven twenty Bernardino Street. Must be right down here, Larry. As soon as we see Colonel Ashman, our troubles are over. Yeah, I sent a wire to Nat Burton. I told him to get us a lawyer to straighten out all this murder business for us. Who's Nat Burton? Oh, he's my agent. You think he'll help? Well, he'd better. If I get the electric chair, he gets ten percent of the current. <laughs> There's the place. Eleven twenty. Wait a minute. You see that sign? Matthew's undertaking parlor. This can't be it. Well, it looks unusual, but that's often the way things are done. I know this is the place. Hey, but this is one of those bury you deep and forget your quick joints. Oh, come on, open the door. Yeah, but but I feel awful funny going in here vertical. Gee, spooky, ain't it? There's somebody coming. If it's Boris Karloff, I've seen this picture. Good evening. Good evening. Can I be of any assistance? Yes. The scorpion. Scorpion, good work. We've been expecting you, Miss Bentley. Right this way. Mm, he looks like Rigor Mortis Jr. <laughs> Colonel Ashman. Miss Bentley. Miss Bentley. Good evening, Colonel. My heartiest congratulations. You've done a magnificent job. You have the scorpion? Yes, Colonel Ashman. But first, your identification, please. Oh, yes, yes, of course. B739A326. And yours, please? 111JJ, X576. And yours, sir? Oh, Hollywood 7245, Class 4B, flat feet. <laughs> this is Mr. Haynes. Without him, I never would have gotten here. Excellent, Mr. Haynes. I assure you, we shall take good care of you. Oh, it was nothing. Three big spies came at me with knives, so I just rolled them downstairs. I like to hear them bounce. <laughs> you must watch out. They don't bounce back. Yeah. <laughs> the scorpion, please. Here. The code is engraved in hieroglyphics in the inside of the back. Oh, yes. Here it is. Certainly left us no time to spare, Miss Bentley. The bombers are waiting to take off. Ulrich, your scar here. Right here, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, but... Keep these people covered. Give me the code book we took from Colonel Ashman. Here, Lieutenant. Hey, what is this? Where's Colonel Ashman? He's in the other room, gagged and bound. Oh, Larry, they're Nazis. We've been trapped. <laughs> so very sorry, Miss Bentley. Now we will find out where our Messerschmitts will hold their rendezvous with your beautiful bummer. Why, you, you... Give me that scorpion. Hold him. Let's go. No, I've got the scorpion. See, you'll never get it. Ah, get that scorpion away from him. Stand back. If you come near me, I'll, I'll swallow it. That's what I'll do. Swallow it. I'll scuttle myself. Oh, you think I won't, huh? You take one more step Give and it I'll... Give There. There, I did it. I swallowed it, and it didn't taste bad. You swallowed the scorpion? I told you I would. Carl, do you have a knife? Yes, Lieutenant. Good. Carl, you have two minutes to get the scorpion. The stomach is about an inch under the lower rib. Huh? I understand. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. Wait. Mary! Oh, now, wait a minute. Cut it out. No, no, I mean, don't cut it out. Larry, the door. The door behind you. Stop him! Stop him! Oh, hold the door, Larry. Listen. Get out the window. Get some cops. Big ones. All right, come on. No, no, you go ahead. I'll hold these guys off. Oh, you can't. Not all by yourself. Oh, I'll think of something. I'll make believe I'm Mantrake. Go on, beat it. Oh, all right. I, I can get out this way. Open this door. I'll hold it to my last breath. Open. I'll hold it to my last breath. Open up and shoot through it. I'm breathless. <laughs> sure. Put up your hand. Now, wait. Carl, the knife. No, you don't. I'm set for you. You don't think I'd come here unarmed, do you? I've got a hand grenade in my pocket. You come near me and I'll pull the pen and we'll have red polka dot wallpaper. Hand grenade? Yeah, so don't make a move. None of you. Lieutenant. <laughs> a bluff. Go ahead, my friend. Throw your hand grenade. Oh, you don't think I will, huh? I'll count three and there'll be nothing left but your pants buttons. One, two. Go ahead. One, two. You said that. I did not. One, two, four. Three. Who said that? I told you there's a bluff. Grab him. No, stop. Come here. Lieutenant, quick. The police. There you see. The police. 
You're all caught like rats in a trap trap. And I'm the piece of cheese that caught you. We've got to get out. Yeah, take him with us. Yep, Lieutenant. If he fights, knock him unconscious. I'll fight, all right. Don't worry. Knock me out, will you? You just try it. You just... Oh. Larry! Larry! Break down the door. Here, here, Lieutenant. Do we know? Get out. Come in the back. Ah, you first. Well, Lieutenant, through the window. Quick, check, Lieutenant. <laughs> Right, darling. You'll be all right. Where? Where am I? In a hospital, dear. The planes are ready to take off. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, that's good. Um, all we need is the scorpion. Oh, is that all? Yes. Doctor, are you ready to operate? All ready. Operate? You're going to operate on somebody? Uh, yes, dear. Well, can, can I watch? No, dear. Well, why not, doctor? I, I've got a strong stomach. That's just the point. In a thing of this kind, we never let the patient watch his own operation. Oh. Oh! Easy. No, stop. It's inside. Yes, we know, darling. Of course darling. it's inside. No, listen. We'll have it out in the gym. Oh, no, wait. Don't, don't fiddle with my middle. <laughs> Mary, please. Please, we need the scorpion. Oh, but it's not inside me. I didn't really swallow it. It's inside your coat. I pinned it there. My coat? Yeah, look. Hurry up and look before that doctor makes like a commando on me. Here, yes, doctor. I've got the scorpion. Uh, doc, you don't have to operate. Doc, take that grin off your face and stop threading that needle, please. <laughs> There they go. A hundred of them. Oh, Larry, I'm so proud of you. Did you hear what Colonel Ashman said? You're probably going to be decorated. Oh, it was nothing at all. If it was for you, Karen, I'd do the whole thing all over again, even if I was in my right mind. Darling, <laughs> would you uh, kiss me again, too? Is, is it that new thing, huh? Oh, no. try it. Okay. Ready? Go. There. You like it? Percy. That wasn't Percy. That was me. <laughs> Mr. DeMille will bring our stars back to the microphone for a curtain call in just a moment. Now for some news about stockings. Have you ever thought about this? Why is it that stockings fit so many differently shaped legs? Why don't they have to be altered to fit, as you so often have to have a dress altered? Well, it's because they have elasticity. They can stretch where they need to, then spring back to cling smoothly to the legs. And it's that same quality of elasticity that lets them give under strain without breaking easily into run. Yes, elasticity is a very important thing in stockings. And it's really good news that the new rayon stockings we've all been getting acquainted with have a lot more elasticity than the earlier ones did. New high twists, new finishes have made this possible. But here's the thing. You mustn't weaken elasticity when you wash stockings. And that's what cake soap rubbing and strong wash day soaps are apt to do. You can save the elastic quality of your rayons if you'll give them the same gentle care you give silk and nylon. Nightly luxing. Squeeze them through rich, lukewarm Lux suds. Rinse them carefully. Let them dry thoroughly from 24 to 48 hours. This gentle Lux care cuts down runs, guards the vital elasticity of your stocking. So for better stocking wear, for most flattering stocking fit, don't trust to Lux. Trust to Lux. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Our spotlight. Proudly turns to Bob Hope and Virginia Bruce as they come back for a curtain call. Virginia, you were grand. And, Bob, I, I must remember this performance when we vote on the Academy Award again. You, you did the best you could. <laughs> Bob, don't let Mr. DeMille kid you. You're just as good an actor as... That's funny, I can't think of anyone you're as good at. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I, I think you're as good an actor as Charles Boyer. Charles Boyer? Well, don't sound so amazed. The only difference between me and Charles is that he's got longer eyelashes. <laughs> what eyelashes? He's the only guy who can wink at a girl and cool her off at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can hardly expect to compete with Charles Boyer romantically, Bob. Oh, just a minute. You can't talk like that about me as a lover. Why, do you know how Madeline Carroll feels toward me? Yes, Bob. 
You think I ought to write Beatrice Fairfax? <laughs> now, Bob, I, I want to speak to you about your salary. I, I think I ought to pay you for tonight's performance and pay you what you're worth. Oh, come now. Don't try to shortchange me. <laughs> Mr. DeMille, you were on Bob's program once. Did he ever pay you? Oh, sure I did. I gave him a present. I went to a big department store and I had to pull plenty of strings before I got exactly what I wanted. <laughs> yes, I... I'm sorry I said anything, Bob. It was, it was really a lovely yo-yo. Say, Virginia, why don't you appear in my program some Tuesday night? I'd like to, Bob, but I need the money. Uh, what about... <laughs> what about next Monday, Mr. DeMille? Good pay? One of the most exciting dramas the world has ever known. A true story of American heroism that really happened. It's a paramount picture that's thrilling the whole country right now. Wake Island. And we'll have two of the same stars who are in the picture. Brian Dunleavy and Robert Preston. And with them, Roderick Crawford. Wake Island makes anyone proud to be an American. And here in the Lux Radio Theater, we feel that it's a high honor to bring you this inspiring story next Monday night. As long as America exists, CB, we'll remember the Marines of Wake Island. I saw the picture, so I know you'll have a great show. By the way, Bob, what, uh, what are you doing over at Paramount now? Oh, I just finished a picture with Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour called The Road to Morocco. It's a sequel to The Road to Singapore and The Road to Zanzibar. Road to Singapore, Road to Morocco, Road to Zanzibar. No wonder your nose looks like a detour. Good night, Mr. DeVille. <laughs> Good night, CB. <laughs> we watch the material. Good night. We'll see what we're all together in the picture. sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Brian Dunleavy and Robert Preston in Wake Island with Broderick Crawford. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> American guns still need your waste kitchen fat. Don't throw away used frying fat, bacon grease, or anything like that, because your government needs every bit. Strain all fats into a wide mouth can and take them to your meat dealer who will pay for them. Save all waste kitchen fats to make explosives. Bob Hope appeared through the courtesy of the Pepsodent Company. Heard in tonight's play were Charles Seal, B. Benaderet, Verna Felton, Edwin Max, Fred Mackay, Leo Cleary, Eddie Marr, Horace Willard, Jack Mather, Pinto Kalvig, Warren Ash, Dwayne Thompson, Wally Mayer, and Dick Davis. Our Lux Radio Theater production of My Favorite Blonde has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of new, quick Lux Flakes, the tissue-thin soap flakes used by smart housewives everywhere, and by the great picture studios to protect the million-dollar wardrobes you see on the screen. As Mr. DeMille has told you, Robert Preston and Brian Donlevy are coming to the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night, and our play will be Wake Island with Broderick Crawford. In the Lux Radio Theater, we will have, as usual, our producer, Cecil B. DeMille. Join us again next week. Be part of the coast-to-coast -coast audience that gathers each week to enjoy this hour of dramatic entertainment. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Brian Don Levy and Robert Preston in Wake Island with Broderick Cropper. Why drag along half alive, nervous, vitamin starved? Get